Welcome to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner. Have you ever stopped to consider the power of words and how you use them? Thank you for joining us today. As we continue to journey through Advent, I'd like to take the opportunity of looking back over the year at Wesley Impact shows and some of the things that we feel good about at Wesley Mission. Across all areas of our work, we seek to share God's love through the lives of all those we serve. We want to communicate God's love in all that we say and do. Today, I'll be speaking with Fran Avon, who is an executive manager in our communications, fundraising and volunteering work. We'll be joined by Ryan Day, who will sing an original song, The King Has Come. And I'll continue in my Advent series, looking at the challenge this week of the message of John the Baptist. As we frequently point out in Advent, John the Baptist has such a significant role to play in preparation for the coming of Jesus. But he also has a very powerful message all of his own. That message calls for us to repent or to change direction in response to God. Before we speak to Fran, I'd like, however, to pause for a moment just to look at the range of services that we offer at Wesley Mission. Bolstered by our strong Christian roots, the organisation has a vibrant spiritual centre that we call Wesley Congregational Life, encompassing worship services, community groups and pastoral care. In fact, during Wesley Mission's early days, it was this same congregation that would go out into the community to assist those most in need. Today, however, we've expanded to operate in 11 specialist service areas. Wesley Family offers a range of services to assist struggling families of all backgrounds. Wesley Youth assists disadvantaged young people to connect with others while learning vital life skills. Wesley Seniors works hard to address the growing needs of Australia's ageing population. Wesley Foster Care Services provide security, support and genuine care to children in need of a safe place to stay. Wesley Disability Services provides those living with a disability with a wide range of support programs. Wesley Homeless Services offers accommodation and resources to those struggling with homelessness. Wesley Counselling Services offers free or low cost counselling to those who need it most. Wesley Mental Health Services provides vital counselling, inpatient and day patient treatments as well as suicide prevention resources. Wesley Carer Services provides much needed respite and support for carers. Wesley Help at Home Services offers in-home support to allow both older people and those living with a disability to maintain an independent life. And finally, Wesley Employment Training and Conferences provides opportunities on all sides of the employment spectrum, also running professional conference centres in both the city and at our bushland retreat. In summary, Wesley Mission currently provides over 130 different individual programs supported by over 1,900 employees and nearly 4,000 volunteers to assist over 19,000 families and individuals every year. As you can imagine, however, we are always looking for ways to do more. I chose to volunteer at Wesley Mission because I'm passionate about justice. I chose to volunteer with Wesley Mission because I've always wanted to work with people who have a disability. You meet friendly people. Uh, they're all people who are self-motivated and energetic. It not only gives me a purpose, it keeps me active and activity leads to longevity. Wesley Mission currently provide over 130 individual services with over 2,000 employees supported by over 3,000 volunteers to assist over 21,000 families and individuals each year. Whew, that's a lot of numbers. So as you can imagine, we are always looking for more volunteers to help, so please, volunteer today, visit our website, wesleymission.org.au. You will not only be meeting new and interesting people, but you will be doing all the good you can, because every life matters. 
Now, please don't hesitate to be in touch with us if you'd like to connect in any area of Wesley Mission. The website, again, is wesleymission.org.au. As the year draws to a close, I thought we'd look back over some of the achievements and activities of the past 12 months and introduce you to a member of our staff who oversees much of our work. Fran, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Keith. Now, you have this great title. I always think titles <laughs> describe what a person does, and I hope yours does. Executive Manager of Communications, Fundraising and Volunteering. What does that portfolio really involve? Yeah, well, it, it is quite self-evident. The three areas of my work, so communications. So we look after all of the marketing requirements of our centres, and that's quite broad. It can be from promoting our work in very commercial areas like our training services, our hospitals, our um, aged care facilities and other times we can be working on um, how do we convince government to support us more um, in some of our areas like homelessness and mental health. Um, we also have a, a corporate function as well which is about looking at our website, things like our social media, our annual review, all of that activity. So it's a, a very busy department because we're supporting about 130 centres across the organisation. So you're bringing together lots of these different areas, which in a way, I don't want to denigrate this, but they are support services exactly. that make the frontline people do their job better. Exactly. Look, um, what do you find the most fulfilling aspect of the work is? Yeah. Um, I think for me it's the fact that we can, as you say, we're a support function, can contribute to the amazing work of Wesley Mission. We're, we're not on the front line, but we are contributing in our way. And it is very humbling when you, you see the work that is being done and knowing that in some way the work of the team is contributing to that. And you work for, for a number of years now, and you're one of our stars, really. And one of the jobs that you have is to actually enable people to link up, isn't it, to see that what they're doing is actually related to the caring. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you manage to do that? I think it's um, you know, showing people what we do. So we are taking our teams out to the centres, we are sharing the stories of our clients, both within Wesley Mission and outside of Wesley Mission. So it is enabling people to see how each of the services are interconnected. A lot of our reports are showing how some of the issues are so connected. So there's about a couple of hundred of us working head office in, in Pitt Street, mm -hmm. but many, many more, uh, hundreds of hundreds of people out there. Do you, think, do you Can you see the difference when, when teams have gone out and observed and, and connected with, with services when they come back? Yes, there's a real energy and enthusiasm when the team come back from being out in the centres. They're quite humbled as well because they realise the challenges that are, are being faced by the teams that are outside in the in the community and um, we sometimes feel we're having a difficult day um, but they realise when they've been to the centres the challenges that our team are working Is there with. a program that sticks out for you as being a program that you think gosh I'm really proud of that being part of our mm -hmm. work? Um, I think one of the ones you know being, being a mum um, I am very I'm proud of the work that we do in suicide prevention because it's obviously an issue with young people today. Um, and one of the, the more recent programs is the Mums and Kids Matter program. It's a, a program for, for mums who are struggling with mental illness um, but enables them to get the support they need while their family and children can still be close by. And I think that's really important for the road to recovery when you know, somebody is struggling with mental illness. Sometimes people ask me the question, are all your, your leaders uh, 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 Christians and are they committed to, to the values that you embrace? And, and that is true about our senior leadership uh, team and you're a member very much of, of that leadership. How important is faith to you in how you understand what you do? Mm -hmm. My faith is extremely important. I think it's you know what brought me to Wesley Mission and I think it enables me to um, look at how I behave as a leader in the organisation, um, ensure that I am showing my Christian heart, my servant heart every day as I come to the office. Um, and I, I just want to be um, the example that I can to my team and, and show them that the work that we do is God's work. And sometimes the challenge for any of us involved in leadership is how do you match up 
making difficult decisions alongside wanting to live out the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and is that the same for you? It is because, you know, Christ had to make very difficult decisions. And I think it is, you know, ensuring that you're looking out for the greater good yes. and that you are, you're making a tough decision that may impact one person. Um, but how does that decision impact a greater number of people? Um, so and when we talk I'm about trying. Christian faith, we're a broad church, aren't we, in the sense that our people come from all kinds of different traditions. Mm -hmm. Is that, does, do you find that a positive thing or a problem? No, I think it's a very positive thing because people bring different views and I think it makes for an interesting discussion and it, it, it ensures that we, we aren't being insular in our views. We are looking at people who come into our services in a way that's embracing of their faith. Um, and of their views. And just as an insight, um, what can happen in, an, in a normal week that's totally abnormal, that throws the whole <laughs> ship into disarray? What can happen? Um, I, I think every day is, is a different day at Wesley. Um, I have worked in large corporations before and I, I think Wesley is the most challenging environment that I've ever worked in yes. because things do happen from day to day that you don't expect. You know, they could be staff issues. Um, the centres may get a call from a minister to say, we, we're having a visit at the centre tomorrow. Can you pull that together? So it's, it's always been, you know, a different challenge thrown at you every day. But exciting. It is. It's very exciting. I've been with the organisation for many years now and, and I'm, I'm not bored. Um, I find that it is, you know, always something different every day. Mm. And, and for you, uh, the challenge of the future? Challenge for the future. Um, recently, in, within our team, we've um, had volunteering as part of our team. So that's the next growth area for us. There's a lot of um, changes within the volunteering environment um, and also in the communications area as well because the um, environment in which the government is operating is changing. Look, Fran, it's great to have an insight into to, to your work, and we're grateful for that. You stay with us, will you, if you will, through the programme. Ryan Day is a singer, songwriter and worship leader at his local church. He's written an original Christmas song, The King Has Come, and joins us today to perform here on the show. He is 
Over the years of Wesley Impact, Keith Garner has had hundreds of conversations sharing stories of hope, resilience, love and the Christian faith. Perspectives on Faith and Leadership is a collection of inspiring and insightful conversations with people who are leaders in their field, including the New South Wales Police Commissioner, Andrew Scipioni, CEO of Lifeline Australia, John Brogdon, the inventor of the cochlear ear implant, Professor Graham Clark, founder of Shed Happens, Ian Watto Watson, respected Australian journalist, Lee Hatcher, and the former Chief Inspector of the New South Wales Police, Gary Raymond. Each conversation shares a unique perspective on leadership and the achievements of notable community leaders and collectively presents a broad cross-section of leadership styles that have brought positive social change. Perspectives on Faith and Leadership is the first instalment of a three-part series and is available now from Wesley Mission. To find out more, contact Wesley Mission on 02 9263 or email impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Now the candles speak a message. We are moving through this marvellous season of Advent. And so as we light another candle, we're very conscious that we're nearing that time when we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist is the story I want to pick up again. John the Baptist was preparing the way, but in doing so, the people really had to pick up the tough message that he came to bring. John preached very much what I think is a message of justice. His call to repentance meant that all who heard it needed to change. I mean, that's the nature of that word repentance. It means to make a, a complete uh, 180 degree turnaround. It, it was to be heard with expectancy, this message. Let me read to you from Luke 3. This is carrying on in the chapter in Luke where we opened up and we realised that John the Baptist was preparing the way. And when we read uh, later on in that chapter, we read in verse 15, the people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. Now, why were they waiting? Well, for 400 years, there had been this vacuum. The prophets had been speaking, the preparation had been coming, but then there was a whole period through the lifetimes and the lifetimes and memories of everyone around a silence. But then the expectancy built and John the Baptist speaks into that vacuum. John gave an answer to their expectancy. So we read in verse 16, John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Gosh, this man John certainly stirred the people up. And he, he was really saying there, look, I'm not actually the Messiah, but somebody is coming, coming very soon. And you've really got to take him seriously. And then he compared himself to Jesus, the Messiah. He said, I'm not worthy to, to, to untie his sandals. I mean, what a marvellous statement, really, of humility that none of us can even begin to match. And, and John the Baptist faded into the background as Jesus took to the foreground. And you find that uh, repeated in John chapter 3, verse 32, where, where we read in John 3, 30, this truth that says, he must increase as I decrease. We have a sample of his preaching, verses 17 and 18. Now, let me tell you, this is not the average church sermon. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the barn, but he'll burn up the chaff with unextinguishable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed good news to them. Look, John had a very powerful message and that powerful message would be disturbing to many people who heard it, not least leaders, religious leaders, people in authority who listened to what John the Baptist had to say. And we know that the end story, the bottom line of the story of John the Baptist is his life was taken from him. And Herod was rebuked because of his lifestyle. How many people would take on a person like Herod? But when John rebuked Herod, the Tetrarch, because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife and all other evil things he'd done. Look, he was locked up in prison for it because he was prepared to take on what he believed were the moral wrongs of the day. Now, Advent is a lovely season. We get all hyped up about Christmas and we want to really have a, a wonderful time celebrating the coming of Jesus. But what John reminds us of 
is the reality that that message speaks powerfully into our society, not into affirming just what is right, but to confront what is wrong. He reacted to, to John, did Herod, stuck him in prison because John was prepared to challenge him. Now, as we continue through this season and we move through those lovely candles to the point where, in fact, I will light the central one on Christmas Day, we find it very easy to get caught up in the splendour of Christmas. I often say here in Australia that I think Christmas begins about July, you know, and they start preparing in the shops and, gosh, October, and I see all the shops are already full of, of Christmas things. November, it gets unbelievably packed. And by the time it gets to Christmas, you know what? The shops are starting to think about Easter. Let's not get ourselves lost. Let's realise that this Advent season is a season of hope, is a season when God speaks powerfully of his justice, of what is right, of what is clearly right in this world, and speaks powerfully to what is wrong. John the Baptist, in an iconic way, represents all of that. A simple lifestyle, and yet more than a simple lifestyle, a powerful message, a powerful message that will give way very soon to the wonder of the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and finally, the birth of our Saviour into this world. It's a wonderful journey through Advent, and I hope and pray that you are finding it easy to share in that story at home, wherever you're listening to uh, the words that I'm sharing and in our programmes. And for us at Wesley Mission, who seek to care in the community for people in need, the message of John the Baptist has a powerful resonance because we're caring for people, not the people who necessarily have, but many who have not. Not just for those people for whom life is smooth, but for those whose life is anything but. But the powerful message of the Christian faith, of the coming of Jesus into the world, is a very real one. Let's not forget, as we've lit that candle, the strong message of John the Baptist. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. wesleymission.org.au For Sarah, Christmas morning will be like every other morning. Her family does not have enough money for the basics such as food and electricity. Wesley Mission offers much needed support to help families like Sarah's, but without your help, we cannot help them. Your donation will provide much needed support and joy this Christmas. Please donate today. Hey, great for joining us today. Please don't hesitate to write and be in touch if you've got any questions or comments on today's programme. Don't forget you can watch this and past episodes of Wesley Impact on our Wesley Mission website at wesleymission.org.au. You can send me an email on Impact TV at Wesley Mission. And, and also you can access our Wesley Impact magazine online and find out more about what's happening in the total life of Wesley Mission. Fran, it's been great to have you on the show. What's the one thing that you'd like people who come across Wesley Mission's communication to know or feel or respond to it in the organisation? I think it's the work that we do is helping everybody because every, every person is important. And just if people could support the work that we do in many ways, through volunteering, through supporting our work, through interacting with all of our um, material online. Thanks, Fran. You share that with me, the desire for us not to be in a place where we're embarrassed about talking about what it is we have to offer, because what we have to offer makes an enormous difference. I want you to continue joining through this season right up to an amazing Christmas Day show. Please do join us next week for another episode of Wesley Impact. Thank you, God bless you, and good to share life and this particular programme in your life too. Wesley Mission helps more than 2,800 families each year through our Wesley Family Centres. 
To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.